While the vision and the mission of the AND campaign we just talked about, while those are framed cleverly within biblical terms, just as in the AND campaign's their vision statement, uh, the goal of asserting the justice and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You say, wow, they've got to be good. But in reality, they define justice and righteousness far different than what the Bible does. In reality, they promote the clear objectives of socialism and big government, the core ideology of Marxism. Well, the other leg of the most aggressive wolf strategies we're talking about that's targeting the church here in America with deception is Islam. And working hand in hand, as I said, with Marxist philosophy, Islam has also invaded the church and is invading the church and Christian organizations and ministries using very similar high-sounding appeals. We're going to look inside one right now that calls itself neighborly faith. Neighborly faith. Boy, who wouldn't want to be neighborly, right? And who doesn't want to have faith? And that's why it sounds good, but it's not what you and I think. In this segment, this notable faith, I'm going to read this. They have there on their website that this neighborly faith is the trusted platform for bringing evangelicals and Muslims together. Now, on one hand, doesn't that sound noble? But not really. Brandon, you've done a lot of work of research on one group to which I just referred called Neighborly Faith. Again, as I said, it sounds harmless enough, but again, it's a true wolf in sheep's clothing. What is this group? Who started it? And who primarily funds it, just so we have an idea of where the fuel for this entity comes from? Well, th that's partly what we're still digging on, and we're the ones that broke this story on our national radio show at worldviewradio.com about a month and a half ago. And we actually included a section of this in our new document, docu movie called Siege uh, that they can watch a whole hour for free at siegethemovie.com, siegethemovie.com. They can watch a whole hour of that eight-and-a-half-hour movie for free because one of the things we're under siege from is things like this that sound good, but they are the enemy sieging us and key areas like religion, and now the evangelical camp. And neighborly faith, we don't know where the funding's coming from yet. We're still digging on that. We know that one of the developers of this, co-director, develops the online curriculum for Moody Bible Institute. Now, I grew up with Moody Monthly coming into my home. I spoke at a church in Upper Mar Marlboro, Maryland in the 90s with the former president of Moody, George Sweeting, a wonderful guy. Uh, you know, I grew up respecting Moody Bible Institute and Moody Radio Network and Moody Monthly. And if someone had told you back in the 70s and 80s that this would happen, you would never believe it. And so uh, we now see Sojourners run by Marxist Jim Wallace. He's writing an article over there. Chris Starbuck, who is with Moody Bible Institute, who's running Neighborly Faith, is writing over there for Marxist Jim Wallace at Sojourners. And again, we have Cedarville involved. We have uh, Fuller involved. We have a lot of groups involved we wouldn't think would be so, but we go back to that idea of setting up thesis and antithesis. Religion News Service did a headline, Neighborly Faith Urges Evangelicals to Find a Third Way to Befriend Muslims. And so again, let's find a way to merge together. Well, I'm sorry, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14-18, light and darkness cannot merge. Evil and righteousness cannot merge. They have nothing to do with these things. And yet, who is part of this interfaith dialogue? Well, we see many people, including on their website at Neighborly Faith, we find ladies wearing their hijab. That means their head is covered under Sharia. They're pushing Sharia. One of the people is a, a part of the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE. CARE was started in 1994. It is part of Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood dates back to 1928 and was involved in the Holocaust and the planning and carrying out of the Holocaust, according to people at the Nuremberg Trials. So you're going to sit in neighborly faith with people whose organizations are all about killing Christians and Jews, which, by the way, uh, Muslim Brotherhood in 87 started Hamas. So this is who they're dialoguing with and trying to find common ground. And the leading scholar for Muslim Brotherhood, who's dead now, Sia Katoub, said interfaith dialogue was a one-way bridge to bring the non-Muslim to their side, not the other way around. And yet this is going on with InterVarsity, Wheaton College. You even have the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities involved. You have, the again, the uh, uh, Luke Goodrich with the Beckett Religious Liberty Law Firm. You have one of the leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics Religious Liberty Commission. They, again, I had a former CIA analyst on my right and a former CIA operations officer on my left at my dinner table in November of 2018. And the one of them on my left said 
that we know for a fact Muslim Brotherhood has said if they can penetrate the evangelical camp, that's the last penetration they need to penetrate all the power centers of America, are evangelicals. And both of them, not from a religious standpoint, from a national security standpoint, they said, Brandon, don't stop doing what you're doing. Evangelicals are the last line of defense, and they, they're targeting them. Uh, Sam, this is proof they're winning. Folks, you're hearing something on this program today that you will not hear on many other programs. Maybe you'll hear about this on Brandon House's ministry, but not many others are talking about this. And honestly, if you have a connection not only to the Southern Baptist Convention, but to Moody Bible Institute, to Cedarville College, and some of these other institutions that Brandon has just mentioned, you need to check into it. You really need to check into it. And you know that statement that is on the Neighborly Faith website that says, the trusted platform for bringing evangelicals and Muslims together, that itself should cause any true evangelical to run from it, to run from it. Because from a social perspective, from a governmental perspective, from a religious perspective, you cannot bring together evangelicals and Muslims. As I'm sitting here in the studio, I'll be honest with you, my blood is about to boil. But going on, if you look at Neighborly Face website, you'll see that it has a picture of one of their primary spokespeople, Ashadi Hamid, who is reported as describing the Muslim Brotherhood as one of the deeply liberal yet mainstream Islamic movements committed to the democratic process. Now, Brandon, how is it that these self-described evangelical leaders who really are not evangelical in my book, can be convinced to look past the clear Islamic jihadist strategies and fixate on being brotherly, and by doing that, walk away from biblical truth. What in the world is going on? Well, these institutions clearly are not teaching a comprehensive biblical worldview or the worldviews, the competing ideas, are they? Because if they were told what Islam is all about, Takiya, their ability under their religious code to lie, Takiya, they can do that. If they were instructed as to the deception of Islam, they wouldn't be doing this. So clearly there's a problem with not teaching basic worldviews and their competing worldviews at these institutions. There's also a lack of teaching of biblical theology, because if you go back to biblical doctrine, we know Romans 16, 17 says that we are not to have anything to do with those who are causing a division doctrinally. Avoid them, mark them, and avoid them. We also know Acts 20, Paul warns of the men who've risen from within. Jude, the men who, again, who've crept in unnoticed. So there's a lack of biblical teaching that shows us the exclusivity of Jesus Christ, the snares of the devil, how these things are brought in and dressed up with with a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. And then there's just a lack of common sense worldview understanding that says, hey, wait a minute, this is what Islam believes. This is their goals according to the Quran, according to the Hadiths. There's no way you can find common ground with this any more than Christians and capitalists can find common ground with capitalism, any more than a healthy body can find common ground with tuberculosis or any other disease. I mean, this is the, the – Romans 1 puts it this way, a nation of fools, vain, useless, and futile. And sadly, I hate to say it, some of the most foolish people I know are self-described evangelicals. And ladies and gentlemen, again, as I've said, we're just touching on some major elements here, evidences – of how deception, as Jesus described in Matthew 24, he said, I send you out as sheep among the wolves. And I ask many pastors, and I ask you parents out there, parents and grandmothers and grandfathers, and all in positions of authority, all of us have a responsibility to warn biblically. Do we know enough to be able to recognize a wolf when we see it? And if we can, have we warned anybody under our authority about the fact that they exist. So pastors, if you're listening, what's the last time you warned your flock about a wolf? Fathers and mothers, last time about a wolf to your children. This is what the Bible says, and of course, that's determined by what is truth and biblical standards, a biblical worldview. We come back to that every time on this program because that's where God would have us to go. 